think about having a chicken korma or any korma in a restaurant. Little do you know, it's actually really simple to make. You just got to know how. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to make a quick and easy korma. First thing, brown onion. I'm going to pop some boiling water into the onion. And these have been fried already. You can make these in advance. And at the same time, we're going to soak some raw cashew nuts. No salt, please also boiling water going in. About uh, 185 mils of cashew nuts going in with 250 mils of water. Boiling water, we're gonna soak that for a few minutes until these cashews soften. And next, back to the brown onion. This is gonna go into the blender. Now, ideally, you'd let this cool down slightly. Pop this in. I'm going to remove the lid just to prevent it from building up too much pressure. Those onions look about right. I'm just going to wipe my hand down. So that's the brown onion paste done. Gently ease the lid off. Don't want to get these nasty splashes all over you. Let's get this into a bowl. It's a very smooth brown paste. You don't need to rinse the blender out. I'm going to add the cashew nuts to the same blender. Just make sure your blender is thermal resistant so you don't end up breaking or cracking your blender. That's ready. I can see the paste is really smooth. Now let's get going with the korma. Some cooking olive oil going into the pan. Let's start out on a low heat, just so we don't burn any of the ingredients. Now cinnamon stick, bay leaf and cardamom pod going into the warm oil. About five cardamom pods. It's important to count these in when you're cooking and before you serve, you count them out. Cardamom gives you quite an intense flavor when you bite into it. Lovely fragrance and aroma, but not a good sensation when you bite into a pod. Swirl that around. Let's turn up the heat and fry these until they're fragrant. Coconut. I'm using desiccated coconut. Always dry desiccated coconut for this recipe. And you sprinkle it in to the side of the pan. About four tablespoons going in. Gives you a lovely fragrance, a delicate crunch, and also a bit of a nutty aroma. So stir this around. It's important not to have very hot oil when you're doing this because coconut can hit the oil and burn, and then you get nasty brown bits in your korma. The thing about korma is you keep the ingredients as pale and as lightly colored as possible. The coconut's browning beautifully. Now, korma is actually a Persian dish, but it's actually very, very popular in India, and it became popular in the 16th century during the Mughal Empire. Oh, and the smell is amazing. I love coconut. The brown onion paste going in to the side of the pan. Stir that around and we're going to cook this until the moisture evaporates. Next in goes some ginger and garlic. Fresh garlic always. I use a paddle spoon, it's one of my favorite spoons in my kitchen. It just gives you a good chance to actually work in those spices and mush them down. Now once the oil starts to separate from the onion paste, we're going to add the spices. Red chili. Like I said earlier, corn is very pale, so not too much. About two teaspoons. And add some green chilies as well, if you like. Garam masala teaspoon and next coriander two teaspoons I'm using roasted spices so you don't have to cook them for too long fry the paste very gently you can turn up the heat now and then salt 
I'm using coarse salt, about six to seven hundred grams of chicken, about a teaspoon and a half. I never put the salt salad on the table. So keep frying and then add the chicken fillets. You could also use thigh fillets if you prefer for this dish. I like fillet, it cooks really quickly. And we're gonna seal the chicken in these lovely spices and coat the meat in the spicy paste. The chicken's browned beautifully. It's time to add the cashew paste. You can also do this with almonds if you prefer. But I love cashew nuts. Let's just stir this through. Quite gently, so we don't splash too much. The cashew nuts are in, gives you a really thick sauce. It's almost like a paste. Lastly, cream going in. And you can use coconut milk if you like. I've used cream this time, just keeping in theme with the Persian inspired dish. You can add a pinch of sugar if you like, but only if you want to, just to bring up a bit of the sweetness in those nuts. Cover the korma, let it simmer for two minutes, and it's ready to serve. I'm sure the chicken korma is ready. Wow. Time to serve it up. It has a luscious, Creamy sauce, very thick, very smooth and silky. Let's scoop it onto the serving plate. Now just pop some coriander over. Just a few leaves, not too much this time. Lastly, the finishing touch, some edible gold leaf. It's quite exotic. It makes every dish look like a royal one. And it is incredibly tricky working with it. So grab a bit and just gently pop it onto the meat. Try and not get it on your fingertips. You can also use tweezers for this. Just let it cling onto the meat. And there we have it, chicken korma, all done in a flash. The perfect dessert after a creamy korma, a saffron coconut cake. And here's how you do it. Flour going into the mixing bowl. And then about 360 grams of flour, that is. 300 grams of sugar. 125 grams of butter, also going in. Soft butter. Now, four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Always level teaspoons. Now while that's going, I'm gonna prepare the saffron. Pop that into a warm pan, shake it about. Next, in goes some coconut milk. Just a tiny bit. And swirl that around. So you're not going to heat up all that coconut milk. Now, let that cool down slightly. The coconut milk, the remaining, goes into the mixer on a low speed again. Now, 
Let's pour the saffron cream into the pan. Looks like custard. Where's this? Until the batter is smooth. After the coconut milk, in go the eggs. Three of them. That's perfect. Scrape the sides down with the spatula. Scrape the bottom of the bowl just to make sure everything's thoroughly mixed. I take those things for granted. Now, divide this into three greased and lined cake tins. I do it the old-fashioned way, one scoop at a time. Now, use the spatula and level the cake mixture, smooth it out. We're going to bake these off at 170 degrees Celsius for 20 to 22 minutes. Now for the coconut frosting. Soft butter going into the mixing bowl. Let's cream this for a while. I love this attachment. You don't have to scrape down the bowl. Now, 500 grams of icing sugar going in. And we're using 250 grams of butter. Now very, very gently turn it up so you don't end up in a cloud of icing sugar. The longer you cream the icing, the fluffier it gets. Add a blob of vanilla paste. You can also use a touch of vanilla essence if you prefer. I like the seeds in the vanilla paste. Gives you a lovely speckled appearance. 75 mils of coconut milk also going in. The frosting's done. It's light and fluffy. The cakes are cooled. Let's grab a spatula and we're going to frost these. going on. Generous blob of cream going on. You can adjust the sweetness of the cream as well according to your taste. So if you want to cut down on the icing sugar, please feel free to do so. Also if you don't want to use coconut milk, you can also add a bit of fresh cream instead. Play around with the recipe and make it your own. I always say I'm not very good at icing but I am pretty good at smearing it on. Next layer. Just press it down gently. Another blob. Third layer. And lastly, smear some around the edges as well. Cover the sides of the cake quite nicely and all your mistakes will be forgiven. And just cover those edges of the cake. You can also just use your palette knife or a spatula to fluff up the top. Lots of rich food, I always feel like a slice of cake rather than an Indian dessert. Now, toasted coconut, the finishing touch. Love the crunch of this toasted coconut. I like quite a dense layer of crispy coconut on the top of this cake. And there we have it, 
That's the saffron coconut cake. All done. AMC Cookware is giving away this set of pots valued at 4,750 Rand. Entry details on screen. Kenwood is giving away this fabulous K-Mix kitchen machine. Entry details on screen. Coca-Cola is giving away a fantastic hamper, which includes a collection of beautiful Coke-branded items for your kitchen. Entry details on screen.